Hey y'all, this is Troy Black. So I have a prophetic vision from the Holy Spirit about the Ark of the Covenant. So, <laughs> this is one of those videos um, where I'm going to talk about something crazy. So, just to give you a heads up. So if you don't want to hear about something crazy, don't watch this video. So, um, and I say that in the best way possible, y'all. There are some things that... Um, you know, the Holy Spirit has either shown me or told me that I have a hard time either number one, believing, or number two, I have a hard time understanding why he's showing it to me. You know, what is the purpose of this? What does it really mean? You know, is this just symbolism? Is it real? You know, like sometimes I'm not truly certain and yet I'm trying to be obedient and sharing what he's asking me to share nonetheless. So I believe as you listen, Hopefully, the Holy Spirit will help this make sense. And so I'm encouraging you right now to listen to the Holy Spirit while I'm speaking. And I'm just going to pray and invite him in right now. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would come, that you would speak to every person listening, that you would speak to speak through me while I am presenting this message from you, Lord, that you would help me to ignore the things that don't matter, to focus on what you're doing and saying. And I just thank you for your glory being here in Jesus' name. So I was praying and worshiping Jesus on July 17th of uh, this year, 2021, and I started to see this vision, and it was a vision of this cave, a large cavern, um, and in, in this like crevice in the cave, and it was actually well lit, probably so that I could see, um, was the Ark of the Covenant, or at least what appeared to be the Ark of the Covenant. And then I heard this, it was almost like someone was shouting from a distance, but I knew it was the Holy Spirit sharing this with me. But I heard this phrase shouted, and it was, it's found, it's found, it's been hidden in, in the earth. It's found, it's found, it's been hidden in the earth. And so immediately when I heard this and I saw this, I had, um, I mean, you, you might call it doubt, but it, but it was just this questioning in my mind, you know, and I, and I had this thought. I don't know what to think about this because honestly, y'all, I have heard the prophecies about the Ark of the Covenant, like things that people have shared, visions and dreams and things. And it's always been a subject for me personally, you know, and I'm not trying to push this off on anyone else, but just for me personally, it's been a subject of, I don't know what to think about it. You know, like I'm not really sure where I stand on any of that stuff. So that was kind of my response to this. And then um, I heard the Holy Spirit say, surely if I hit it, I can find it. Surely if I hit it, I can find it. So I'm going to let you know where I stand uh, after seeing this vision and hearing this, the same exact place I was before. <laughs> so if God is wanting to change my heart about this issue, I'm totally open to it. And I'm hoping that he does at the right time, but I'm only sharing this. So this is why I consider this like more, one of my, more of my, one of my crazy messages is because I don't fully understand the reason um, for this or even why I'm sharing it. I'm just trying to be obedient. So then I, you know, I kind of put this on the back burner for a while, prayed about it a little bit and said, Lord, you're going to have to let me know what to do with this. Right. And so I was actually reading Hebrews one day. Um, and suddenly the Holy Spirit began to speak to me while I was reading Hebrews. Um, and uh, several of the, the videos that I've been releasing recently have been about he Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. The Lord has very, really highlighted that book for me lately. I encourage you to go read the whole book. It's amazing. Um, but this is what I read. And this is what he began to show me. And this actually jumped out at me. And it was something that I don't think I fully understood before. So this is Hebrews chapter 9. And this is starting in verse 2. It says, For there was a tabernacle prepared, the outer one, in which were the lampstand and the table and the sacred bread. This is called the holy place. Behind the second veil, there was a tabernacle, which is called the holy of holies having a golden altar of incense and the Ark of the Covenant, covered on all sides with gold. So the, this is talking about the tabernacle that the Israelites built based on what God's design in the wilderness. So, you know, go look up a picture of the tabernacle in the wilderness if you don't know what it looks like. But it essentially it had these layers to it where there was the outer um, there was the outer layer. There was like kind of a middle section. And then there was like the, the very, very center. That was the Holy of Holies, right? Um, you know, and it represents different things throughout Scripture, represents different things for us as believers now. But this is what the Holy Spirit began to point out to me, that in the Holy of Holies, where the Ark of the Covenant was, when the tabernacle was made, 
that was the place that God's people could not enter. One person, the high priest, could go in there once a year, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. At least that's the way it was uh, once the temple was built. But the rest of the people could not go in. The Ark of the Covenant was right there. And in a sense, it was hidden. Very similarly to the way it was in, my, in the vision that I had from the Holy Spirit. Okay, now I'm going to jump forward. This is Hebrews chapter 9. I'm jumping forward to verse 23. Therefore, it was necessary for the copies of the things in the heavens to be cleansed with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ did not enter a holy place made with hands, a mere copy of the true one, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. 25 says, Nor was it that he would offer himself often as the high priest enters the holy place year by year with blood that is not his own. Otherwise, he would have needed to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now once at the consummation of the ages, he has been manifested to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Verse 24 is amazing, kind of mind-blowing. It says, For Christ did not enter a holy place made with hands, a mere copy of the true one. When it's, when it's talking about the copies of the things in heaven here, it's talking about things like the Ark of the Covenant. It's talking about things like the lampstand, the sacred bread. These things, the, thing, the, the way that God designed the tabernacle in the Old Testament and the temple, God designed it in such a way that he was showing physical representation of what was in the heavens with him, what was in heaven with God. So the, the Ark of the Covenant represented something here on earth that was, it was a representation here on earth of something that was in heaven. And I hope that makes sense. And this is what this verse is saying. It's saying that Jesus presented his blood not on an altar here on earth that was a mere copy, but on a spiritual altar in heaven where he's never ha- going to have to do that again. There's never going to have to be another sacrifice made. So if, if there is no other meaning that comes out of this vision or this word from the Lord than this, I believe if nothing else, at least he's saying this, that the Ark of the Covenant has been found and it is supposed to be a part of every believer's life every single day in that God wants us to come boldly before the throne room of grace every day based on Jesus' blood already being on the altar and his blood always being what we need, always being enough. That one sacrifice always being enough to cover our sins. I think so many Christians get hung up on what we have done for God or haven't done for God or where we failed God that we miss the whole point of the new covenant. The whole new covenant is a better covenant than the old covenant. The whole new covenant points to Jesus and the fact that he died once for all sin. And if we believe in him, we are made righteous before God. We become the righteousness of God, the word says. So again, if this vision means nothing else, which it may, I'm not sure. But even if it means nothing else, it means this. The, the, the copy, physical copy, Ark of the Covenant, you know, that was, that was in the tabernacle that has been lost. It has been found within the construct of the new covenant. And it's a better one. It's a better version. <laughs> and, it, and it can be our ticket into the presence of God every single day. Not it itself, but the blood that is upon it. The blood that Jesus presented to the Father in heaven. This is something I didn't know for a long time. But scripture says that when Jesus rose from the grave and then he went back to the Father, this was before he presented himself to the disciples, it says that he brought his own blood into the throne room. And so every single time that we make a mistake, every single time that we feel unworthy of either coming before God, entering his presence, or being used by God, Every single time that we want to doubt instead of walk by faith, we can be reminded that his blood is already in the throne room. It's already made a way for us to come in. And our response to that should be, 
Yes, of course, God is going to do what he has said he's going to do. Why? Because he's already made a way by his grace. He's already made a way. You know, so when you have those questions, why would God heal me? The answer is not, oh, because you've been a real good Christian or you've, been in, you've done enough good things or you haven't done this bad thing for a while. No, the answer is because the blood of Jesus is already on the altar. The grace of God has already made a way. When you ask that question, why would God use me to bring somebody to Christ? Why would he use me to start a revival? Why would he use me to prophesy to someone? Why would he use me to, to put my hands on someone and heal them? The answer is not because you're a good person. Not because you've done enough, not because you've been devoted enough. The answer is because the blood is already on the altar. The grace of God has already made a way. I hope this has been encouraging for you. It's been super encouraging for me. Yeah, it's a little weird. That's okay. (laughs) We can get through it. I just want to thank you all so much for uh, supporting this ministry financially. Um, Here is a really cool way that you can do that, especially if you've been knowing that the Lord has been asking you to do that and you haven't got a chance to yet. I have a prophetic conference coming up the end of this year. I'm going to be hosting it. I'm going to be inviting other uh, prophetic speakers, and we're going to be answering the question, what is on God's heart for 2022? We're going to be entering the presence of the Lord, you know, in worship. We are going to be expecting the glory of God to show up, expecting salvations, expecting people to get healed. And if you want to be a part of helping me to create this conference, I've actually got a GoFundMe page where you can go uh, help fund this conference and help it actually become a reality. So once the conference is funded, I'm actually not going to be asking for money. I'm, you know, we're going to be focusing on what is God saying during this time. And you can also pre-register for it right now, which I'm so excited about. And you can also pre-register for the conference right now. And when you pre-register, you're going to be getting email notifications of the speakers when I'm announcing those, the uh, the actual date of the conference, and we're going to be reminding you when it's actually happening so you don't forget to tune in and to be a part of what God is doing. I'm so excited about this. I hope you go check it out. Links are below this video. I love you all so much, and I'll see you next time.